How many times have you been running late somewhere, trying to get ready quickly, and the last thing you need is to be stressing out about what to wear? But here you are, standing in front of your wardrobe, again, not knowing what to wear. We've all been there, but I will make you a promise right now, my friend. By the end of this video, you will never struggle to put an outfit together again. I want you to categorize your pants into three categories, casual, daily, and smart. Your casual bottoms are, as the name implies, your most casual category of pants. For me, that would be sweatpants. But for someone who prefers dressing a bit smarter, this could be jeans, for example. Whereas jeans for me would fall into the daily category. This category is your go-to daily wear. They're the pants you grab when you just don't want to overthink your outfits and don't have a particular dress code to adhere to. For me, this would be jeans. But depending on your style, some other options for this category could be chinos, corduroy trousers, linen trousers, or cargo pants, among others. The smart category is for your smartest attire when you want to be a bit more formal. For most people, especially if you work in an office or often have to be dressed up, this will be suit trousers. For myself, I don't often need to be in a suit, so I would simply have normal smart trousers in this category. Ideally, something with a center press crease, and usually I like them with a pleat. So depending on the dress code of where you're going, if there is one, you're going to select a pair of pants from the appropriate category, casual, daily, or smart. Step two, have a standardized outfit for each category of pants. Or you can call it a signature outfit. Sounds less boring, but in essence, you wanna have a go-to selection of shoes and tops that you know will look good with every category of pants. Remember, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel or win a fashion creativity award. We're just trying to make the process of getting dressed as quick, easy, and seamless as possible for when you're short on time or just struggle to put an outfit together. So let's break it down with my selections as an example. We have the sweatpants for the casual category, which I can always pair with sneakers, a plain oversized tee, and a hoodie or sweatshirt. Then we have the jeans for the daily category, which I can pair with sneakers or boots, a plain t-shirt, and a hoodie, sweatshirt, or knitted sweater. If I want to lean more casual, I'll go for sneakers and a hoodie. Whereas if I want to lean more smart, I'll go for the boots and the knitted sweater. Lastly, we have the smart trousers for the smart category, which I can pair with either boots or loafers and a shirt plus tank top combo up top. Keep in mind, this is my version of smart because I don't often need to wear a full suit, even though I love wearing one from time to time. For many people, the go-to outfit in this category will be a full suit with a shirt, tie or no tie and dress shoes. Now you have three go-to paths for your outfit with some subtle functional adjustments to still allow for some flexibility and fun. Have you noticed the common theme with this concept? It's all about outfit selection based on formality. You figure out how formal you need to be dressed and then pick the right category of outfit for it. It's actually a super functional way of getting dressed, which takes away a lot of overthinking. It's not something you wanna to stick to all the time because it does somewhat limit your creativity, but it's great when you don't wanna overcomplicate things and just be out the door looking good in no time. Now, before you ask, because I know what you're thinking, all these outfits only have two layers, so what about when it's cold? Well, I would recommend having two outerwear pieces that you know will work with every single one of these combinations. For myself, I would pick a black overcoat as a smarter piece and a black leather jacket for a more casual piece. These two are timeless items that I know will work with all of the above outfit combinations. Okay, I want you to take a look at this. What is the common denominator in all of these outfits? Take a look and think. I'll give you five seconds. Okay, I hope you guessed right, because the common denominator is... Color is a super fun aspect of fashion. It can allow you to be playful, bold, expressive, but when it comes to putting a good outfit together, it will be far easier to stay away from the louder colors and instead stick to your neutrals. In fashion, neutral colors are considered to be black, white, gray, beige, brown, navy, olive green, and to an extent, denim can also be considered a neutral if it's in a classic blue wash. Non-neutrals include the rest of the colors. With neutral colors, you can pretty much combine any two or three colors together and they will work. Blue and white, black and brown, gray and black, beige, white, and olive green, the possibilities are endless. So when you have mostly neutral colors to choose from, it makes getting dressed so much easier that you could practically get dressed in the dark and still come out looking good. By the way, I am by no means saying don't wear color. I love a pop of color as much as the next guy, but when it comes to speed and efficiency of getting dressed, neutrals simply take the crown. 
I don't know about you, but as a guy, I don't really feel like having a huge jewelry box and having to choose from dozens of different options of rings, bracelets, etc. All you really need is a go-to watch if you like watches, if not, a bracelet is also fine. And if you do have a watch, you can wear a bracelet on the opposite hand. I think a simple chain necklace also looks great on every guy. Personally, I never take mine off. And then you can have some rings. I say some because the exact number heavily depends on your style. As a general guideline, the more simple your style is, the fewer rings you should probably wear. Because it would look weird if you had a Scandi minimalist aesthetic and then four big chunky rings on each hand. The balance just wouldn't be right. So you'd probably want one or two rings at most. Similarly, if your go-to outfits are quite fashion forward, you probably want to accessorize more heavily to keep that balance between your clothing and your accessories. Hats are another great accessory that can complete an outfit. I would recommend having one go-to hat that you know will look good with all of your signature outfits. For me, that's this black cap from Off-White. But if baseball caps aren't your thing, there are many different categories of hats you could go for. Beanies, flat caps, bucket hats, whatever suits your style the most. By following these four steps, you should now have one signature outfit option for every level of formality, which will allow you to easily put together a good outfit without overthinking. But once you get to this stage, I want to offer you one extra tip to challenge you as a way to experiment a little bit once you're comfortable with the aforementioned steps. And that is... Step five, mix categories together. I know what you're probably thinking. Why even bother creating these categories in the first place if we're now going to mix them up? Again, this is not mandatory at all. It is just an advanced tip to give you an easy direction to experiment and create more unique outfits. The key though is to only ever mix two of these categories, not three. For example, I could take the knitwear from the daily category and pair it out with the sweatpants from the casual category. Or I could pair my daily jeans with a shirt from the smart category, worn open over a tank top for a chic and effortless look. This is a pretty foolproof way to add a little spice to your style without having to purchase any additional pieces or straying away from your signature outfits. All right, enough talking for now because action speaks louder than words. So let's end this with a couple of my favorite signature outfits using these five steps.